Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the American Justice Podcast. It's been a bit, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> it has been a little bit. Uh, we are knee deep in so many things right now. But what we wanted to do is we wanted to reach out and just kind of give everyone an update as to what's going on, as, as to what, well, what we're allowed to talk about, what we're involved in. So uh, first of all, Scott, how are you doing? <laughs> I am doing well. I am doing well. I'm very, very busy and uh, uh, it seems like I never have a second to myself, but you know. That's right. The life, that's the life I chose for myself, right? Yeah, that's I I feel I feel the same way uh between, you know, working working with this and my own writing career, I just I look in the mirror daily and go, "What in the hell are you doing?" And we both have full-time jobs and we we have full-time jobs, so. And you actually have a kid and a wife, which I don't have, but <laughs> right? I like I I choose other things to fill in that time. Yeah, uh, it's 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 a busy life. We we both have very very busy lives. You know, not to mention the pandemic still going on, and you know the crazy election that we lived through and stuff I've stuff been like that. Through for the last two months. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, longest damn election in history. Uh, <laughs> right. We and thought I it was all going to be over. We thought we were all going to wake up and know things. Nope. Nope. You know, oh. and, and it kind of makes me wonder if, you know, going forward in the next election, if we're ever going to have, you know, hopefully these states that kind of uh, uh, took a while to count, hopefully they can change their uh, their system so that they can have results. You know, it right. doesn't make any sense to me that we live in, you know, 2021 now, and there's not a way that these votes can be electronically tabulated you know yeah if we're still having to go back and uh look at each one and verify signatures you know it seems like there should be some kind of national voting registry database or something based off of your i don't know your fingerprint and your social security number or something that ensures that that it's you voting uh, but it should be able to be done electronically. Come on, people. We live in 2021. Make something right. Happen. Yeah. I mean, you know, even even my phone runs off of my fingerprint. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's, I'm, I'm, there has to be a way with all the things that social media can do today. Of course, they use their power for all the wrong reasons <laughs> with all all the things that social media can do. Surely we can have a secure way to vote an even more secure probably way to vote from just our own personal devices at home rather than go out into the world and be accused of fraud and right. everything else. So uh, I think it, I think it's something they they do need to focus on in the next four years when the next uh, presidential election comes along. I think we surely we can have something by then. I would I would hope so. We'll put it that way. We'll rely on our. <laughs> this is almost an oxymoron, but we'll rely on our elected officials to uh, right. put that into. Uh, into into uh, play there. <laughs> exactly. So uh, the Brandon Woodruff case, the good old Brandon Woodruff case, uh, oh, it was gosh. covered on it was covered on True Crime Garage. Yes, I know that that was super exciting. You know, it's funny because uh, Nick and uh, the captain, the, the host of the True Crime Garage. And by the way, if, if you haven't gone and looked at or listened to that episode or those two episodes actually they covered uh, brandon's case in two episodes if you haven't uh, listened to those you really should just go to any podcast for uh format uh apple stitcher pod uh pod bean uh, right spotify any way that you listen to podcasts just search for true crime garage it'll come up and uh i think it was uh no what was it like november that or late, late October, I forget exactly I, when it was. Yeah, I think I think so. I think it was I think it was like late October. Yeah. I, it it had to be because I haven't really done much since the beginning of November. <laughs> it's it's been it's been freaking depressing, man. Right. <laughs> I, I uh I I honestly I I haven't been able to to be creative at all. Yeah. Uh, I I sat down and pecked out a maybe a thousand words to a short story. I've got 
Uh, I'm submitting to an anthology, but other than that, no, I haven't, yeah. I haven't been able to, it's just as an artist, it's just been depressing. Yeah. Well, you know, so, um, late October then we'll say it was. Yeah. Had to and, be. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, just go back and search their their episodes. Um, they really did a good job of of covering the information in in the two episode format, and and even they'll ad admit that you know their the format of their show, the way that they do their 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 shows, is not really built for covering a case uh, extensively like we did. Um, but I thought it was kind of funny that I didn't even know that they were doing it. Like uh, a friend of mine sent me a text message and said, hey, did you know that True Crime Garage had covered Brandon's case? And it was like, I guess, two or three days after it came out. And I was like, you got to be kidding. Like, I love True Crime Garage. That was one of my favorite uh, podcasts of that genre. Well, favorite podcast, period. But I had no idea that they were covering Brandon's case. And then I come to find out, I got in touch with the, the host um, and uh, it come to find out that they actually used a lot of our podcasts uh, to do the research for their two episodes. And so I contacted Nick and I was like, hey, this is Scott. And he's like, yeah, I know exactly who you are. I've been listening to you for the last week. And I was like, <laughs> well, okay then. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's actually that's that's actually kind of an honor, uh, knowing oh, yeah. that knowing that they they you know used our stuff to yeah. to uh, put out their podcast. Yeah, so they used our stuff. Was... They used the you know public records. They uh, uh, you know they really researched the case, and and overall, you know, they got about ninety five percent of it right. There were a couple things where. Uh, they didn't really get wrong. They just didn't really go into a, a full explanation right. uh, as to what actually happened. But, uh, uh, but yeah, they did a super good job. And uh, Nick is a really, really nice guy. So, um, so I'm really happy that they covered that. And I would encourage everyone to go check out the True Crime Garage and uh, especially the cases about Brand or the shows about Brandon, but all of their cases, all of their shows are very interesting to listen to. It's kind of a fun format. It's almost like our format where, you know, Nick is, uh, is the guy that talks and then uh, the captain is the guy that, that, you know, kind of breaks in with the comic relief every once in a while. I feel like that's <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I guess I, that's because I, I can't off the top of my head, I can't tell you a lot of things about the case. So that, that would be my role if I had to have one. <laughs> yeah. So it's fun to listen to. I, I hope that we're fun to listen to. So, um, you know, that's uh, uh, so yeah, check out all of their other uh, shows as well. It's very entertaining. It's a good way to uh, past your time uh, going to work or whatever you're doing and you just have some some free time yeah well t tens of thousands of people find us interesting i guess because uh those numbers for season one of the american justice podcast are pretty impressive i actually uh they are definitely exceeding my expectations um when we first started i was looking at uh other people's numbers and they were talking about you know uh, I've only been doing this a year and I've already got, you know, 2000 downloads and all this stuff. And I was like, okay, well, that's a number, you know, and then find out that our numbers just for the first season is in the tens of thousands. Right. Um, you know, that, that was, uh, we're super thankful for everybody that's listening. Uh, everybody that's paying attention to Brandon's case, because for me, and the reason that we started this, uh, was really just to get Brandon's case out there. But now that we're going to be moving on to other inmates, um, you know, it's it's just super awesome, and we're really thankful to everybody that listens and and you know pays attention to these wrongfully convicted people. Now that brings me to the next subject, uh, season two of the American Justice Podcast. What can you say about that as of right now? <laughs> Well, I can tell you that uh, we can't say a lot because we're still in the middle of uh, vetting the case and looking into it and investigating it. So uh, we don't want to say who the person's name is because just in case something happens and we realize, wait, this guy is guilty. 
Um, but it, by all accounts, everything that we're looking into right now, it really looks like that this case is a lot like Brandon's where there was no eyewitness, there was no DNA, there was no confession, there was, you know, there was none of this stuff uh, that one would expect in a murder trial. Um, there was just a lot of kind of finger pointing and innuendo and speculation and, um, you know, they ended up convicting him. So, uh, like I said, we're still looking into it. We're still, we just got a big box of uh, the trial transcript and other uh, investigative reports and stuff we're still going through. But I really think that um, if it turns out that this guy is innocent and we do cover uh, his case, um, it's a very interesting case. I think people will be very glued into uh, his story because it's it's one of those stories where you just shake your head and you're just like, how can this happen in the United States of America in this century? You know, I don't know, man. You know, we we used to say that a lot uh, back in October. How can th how in in the modern age in the United States of America can this thing happen? We used to say that a lot and we used to say it to each other a lot. I know we've said it in the podcast a lot, <laughs> but then you have the events of November and the events of early January. And you're like, no, um, America's uh, still kind of crappy. <laughs> yeah. It's like 2020 was so bad. And, you know, we're like, how can it be any worse? And 2021 came around and said, hold my year. Oh, yeah. Hold my year. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I, I don't put anything past anyone anymore. <laughs> well, I think that it's, you know, it's also one of those things where when somebody's in power, you know, you have an investigator, you have a district attorney, you have, uh, people that, that have power in their town and in their area, their County. Um, a lot of times it's just, I'm going to do it because I can yeah. And, you know, it's it, they, they get corrupt on that power and it's unfortunate, but I think it happens a lot more than people are willing to recognize. Well, I just I'd never seen it play out on that scale before. I, I think that's that's why it was it was so shocking to me, even though I recall saying to several people on many different occasions uh you know, I'm I'm not going to put anything past these people that are making these threats, and uh, I I guess I was just saying it to be saying it. <laughs> I don't know, just uh, you know, just what what someone can do, someone will do, and uh, no, they sure as hell did. <laughs> yeah, thousands and thousands of them sure as hell did. So uh, it's it's crazy. Yeah, but enough about that shit. You've got an interview coming out, Sword and Scale. Is that correct? Yes. So there's another podcast that is going to be covering Brandon's case. And luckily, <laughs> this time they're giving us a heads up and they actually interviewed me or uh, uh, emailed me and asked me if I would be willing to be interviewed for their episodes that they're going to do on it. And of course I said, yes, anything to get Brandon's story out there. Um, so we are actually, they're flying here from California uh, to do an interview with me in person. And wow. uh, we're gonna talk about Brandon's case. And I don't know how many episodes they're planning on, on doing, but Sword and Scale is also one of those that's one of the biggest true crime podcasts out there. And you know, just anything that we can do to get Brandon's story out there um, is is what we're going to do. You know, we're not going to um, hold anything back when it comes to getting this story out there. You know, not only is there somebody in prison that's completely innocent, but the converse to that is that there's somebody that's guilty that's still free. And that needs to be rectified as well. Well, did you did you warn them that people have a really bad habit of leaving California to come to Texas and they stay? That seems to be happening a lot, whether it be for uh, residential reasons or business purposes. 
Right. Every, everybody seems to be flocking here, if not the Dallas area, definitely the Austin area. Yeah, I was going to say, I just found out the other day that Joe Rogan moved to Austin. And his yeah. podcast to Austin. I had no idea. It's a great city. It's an awesome city. Love the green belts. Not a big fan of the people. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I love Austin. It's, uh, it's fun. I've always yeah. had fun when we go down there. My, uh, my, my wife wasn't born there, but she lived there the majority of her life. And I like to think that uh, I, I laid claim to the best thing that ever came out of Austin, Texas. So. <laughs> nice. At first, when you were asking me if I asked this producer a certain question, I thought you were going to say, did I warn her that people in Texas leave their art uh, out on uh, shelves for people to pick up and shoot people with? <laughs> right? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. No. Do you, do you... <laughs> I was like, whatever, I did not whatever you do about that. But... Whatever you do when you're here, don't go to a museum. <laughs> Shit's dangerous, man. Or don't go into someone's house that uh, professes to be a uh, art collector. That... Right. Speaking of, of uh, weapons and art collectors and prisoners, have you talked to Brandon? How are they uh, dealing with the COVID situation? I've talked to Brandon a few times. Uh, the COVID situation is definitely putting a hamper on their uh, ability to like be out in the day room and have as much quote unquote freedom, I guess, as you can have in prison, but uh, there's several times that they've been locked down and they can't leave their cell and every, you know, the, the guards are testing positive and the inmates are testing, you know, it's, it's just a crazy situation. A lot of us don't realize or think about, you know, we're having to be quarantined or we're having to restrict our movement or our vacations or whatever. Um, you know, those guys that are in prison are a lot of right now, a lot of them are restricted to their cell. They can't even come out of their eight by 10 cell, you know? Yeah. Um, so wow. yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty dire situation for them as well. But, um, you know, especially when you're in prison for something you didn't do. Yeah. And this would probably be one of, of the best times if you ever, thought about becoming maybe some sort of pen pal with somebody who is incarcerated i'm sure a letter would be gold right now since i'm sure visitation has been cut down and yeah that's just that has to be absolutely horrible for some reason i thought you were going to say if you ever thought about becoming a prisoner i was like <laughs> i don't know that this would be the best time to do that I have never, not once in my life, thought about becoming a prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually a lot of thought goes into avoiding becoming a prisoner, right? That is that is true. No, uh, no, 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 no. Especially Just, with uh, you, since you saw all those prisoners and how they live, you know, down there. Yeah, you know, honestly, and I've I've said this many times to many different people. When when you uh, compare apples and oranges. I actually enjoyed the company of the most of the inmates compared to most of my fellow officers. So that says a lot about you. <laughs> no, I, I don't think I don't think it says a lot about me. It also says a lot about um, your uh, typical deep South law enforcement mentality. Uh, Without without calling any names, I do still have quite a few of those officers on my social media pages, and it does not surprise me at all that they have a tendency to lean more toward the uh, MAGA QAnon side of the spectrum when it comes to social media. So those that's that's why we're not buddies. Well, I think that's. Uh kind of Greenville in general, isn't it? It is. It is uh, Greenville in general. Just uh, tonight, scrolling through the social media pages uh, and posts from the Greenville Herald Banner, the newspaper there in Greenville, 
uh, just some some of the the comments from the citizens and the readers on their post regarding tomorrow's presidential inauguration is just enough to make me sick. You know, you th you think with the events of January sixth, some of these people would kind of sit on these comments a little bit because uh, you know you're you're pretty much i mean if if you believe this way thanks to the actions of a few thousand people in Washington DC thanks to those actions if you have a tendency to believe this way and you're vocal about it you you're kind of labeling yourself as as like a domestic terrorist or a white supremacist or and it doesn't seem to bother these people at all it's uh they're they're still being very vocal about how the election was was rigged and uh, not my president and all that good stuff and didn't seem to change their game at all. Way to go, Greenville, Texas. Way to go. <laughs> if this was my podcast, if this was the Butterflies Make Me Angry podcast, right about now, I would have cued the music and played banjos. <laughs> I remember hearing that. We gotta, we gotta do that. Maybe I'll add that in, uh, to this. One. Yeah, I've, I've got it. Uh, I do when, when I do. I'm on a break right now. I'm gonna start up again the first Thursday of February, but I do all completely live shows now, like 100% live, to where people can call in or, or jump into the chat as we record the episode. So. Uh, Potential for disaster is, is what it what it is. Potential for disaster, but so far not bad. But yeah, I do I do have the banjo queued up on the soundboard at any time for when I might want to mention my hometown. Yeah, Greenville. Yeah. So I guess we, uh, you were you were saying one of the one of the last times we spoke, you were saying that as soon as some of the COVID restrictions are lifted, then the uh, petition delivery to Austin can happen for Brandon. Yes, so I'm, I'm actively uh, keeping in contact with the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals. And whenever they start to allow um, in-person delivery of, uh, of documents, we will get a crowd together and we will go down and you know, for those of you that haven't actually listened to the last couple episodes of uh, season one, um, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals has not yet heard Brandon's case. Uh, they tabled it. They basically said, well, thanks for all these petitions, but we're not going to hear them. So basically they said, you know, we're not going to hear the petition. Um, we're just sidelining it and and that's it and and if they never hear it they never make a decision on it then basically it's just in pending status and it stays there forever till the inmate dies so basically the petition is that we are asking the court of criminal appeals to hear the petition uh hear the the appeal so if they if we can get enough people down there we can convince them Maybe there is something to this case. Maybe there is something to this appeal. And they decide to take it up and hear oral arguments. Um, then it's very possible that Brandon's case could be remanded, um, you know, because of that appeal. So we just have to put a little, uh, a little fire under their butts, I guess. And hopefully we can get a bunch of people down there um, you know, to, to kind of uh, demonstrate how many supporters Brandon really does have. Right. Yeah. We no, will definitely uh, give people like a heads up and, you know, plenty of time to uh, plan, you know, take off of work or whatever you're going to do. Um, just got to figure out how we're going to do that and not let Charla know. Just. Uh... <laughs> 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 oh, did I say that? <laughs> what are you saying? She uh, she wouldn't uh, be the, the welcome wagon. She wouldn't be making her way around to the to the various hotel rooms or. I'm saying there's a good possibility there may be a, <laughs> a bomb planted in the middle of our uh, of our uh, gathering there. Right. Yeah. You know, good, good call. I wouldn't, my, my brain always goes to sex. <laughs> Did you notice that? That's, that's where. Yes. Everybody noticed that Chad. <laughs> 
I've had lots of comments about that. You're you're talking about you're talking about bombs and everybody's safety, and I'm over here going, oh yeah, she's gonna jump door to door and screw everyone. <sighs> Sorry. Oh my. I mean, she can do that without being a gathering of Brandon's petition, but yeah, that's true. You know, maybe, maybe uh, our uh, her, her weekend trip and our weekend trip just happened to coincide. <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> I guess I'll just preface whenever we make the announcement, I'll be like, all right, all you people out there, except for Charla, if you're Charla, <laughs> turn it off now. Okay. And so you, what you, you, see her, is, you see her walk out of the crowd, like the one lone person walking out of the right. crowd. Yeah. Can you imagine if like we're all down there in masks and stuff and we don't really, and all of a sudden that one person, those eyes look kind of familiar and we're like, wait a second. Wait, are those glowing? <laughs> Is there red fire coming from those <laughs> eyes? She's a Sith. <laughs> all right, we, we, uh, uh, we're going to get in trouble. Yeah, we are. All right, so if you will move your head slightly to the right. Yes, yeah, you're right, you're right. My you right. see the words back there on Scott's board that says Texas injustice. Now, <laughs> well, can you tell the good people who uh, probably stopped listening five minutes ago <laughs> <laughs> what Texas injustice is? Not not Texas injustice in general, but what what yeah that's a whole that's a long explanation <laughs> why you have it written on your board yes well you know the current title of the documentary is texas justice brandon woodruff right and we realized that uh that we're gonna have to kind of mix things up a little bit as we're formatting it for other uh platforms amazon hulu netflix etc um, so we have changed the name of the film from Texas Justice Brandon Woodruff to Texas Injustice. And I don't mind telling the name of the film because I already have texasinjustice.com and texasinjusticefilm.com. So don't think that you're going to steal those from me. <laughs> People out there, whoever you are, Charlotte. <clears throat> Anyways. <laughs> So, you can't make the movie if I buy the website. I buy the website, that's right. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, so we changed the name. We're changing up the format. And part of changing up that format is we're going to talk about um, the, uh, the history of Greenville and especially considering its um, small-minded prejudice side uh, and one of the ways that we're going to be doing that is we're going to talk about the history of the KKK in Greenville. And so part of the film is going to be talking about that. And part of doing that is we're going to be filming a mock KKK rally, Klansman rally, and which we will be burning across and having people in sheets and hoods, uh, uh, marching around it uh, just so we can have some B-roll um, in the film. So we had a little bit of a, uh, a field trip this last weekend. Field trip, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be, uh, I'll, maybe I'll put some pictures up over the screen now. When we're, uh, but we had we had some fun out there trying to set a cross on fire. You, do you know how do you know how hard it is to set a twelve foot tall cross on fire? Man, we we both discussed that we just did not give these clans people enough credit. Like they were no, very... this takes this takes effort. <laughs> I, I mean, mean, they they really hate black people. <laughs> I mean, we thought we could go out there, you know, put a wooden cross out there, drop a match on it, and it would catch fire. No. That is not how it works, not at all. Yeah, so we had a hard time, a big, uh, a hard time trying to catch that cross on fire. But I think we finally figured it out because we are smart. Yeah, it is. It is so figure. It it burned so good. It or well, it burns. I'm supposed to be a writer. It burned so well. That it took some of the surrounding grass with it. So, 
<laughs> and you can almost Oops. hear, you know, as as the as the fire was starting to spread on the ground, you can almost hear uh, Chad's butthole puckering out. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. If you ever, uh, you know, those those little uh, those little suction cup uh, stuffed animals that people stick to their windshields in their car, you ever like pulled one of those off? That's what it sounded like. <laughs> Yeah, that was um, that was very interesting. It is, but it it is in the works. It's it's a deal. It's a it's a done deal. It's happening, and it's yeah. it's in the works. And we're just waiting for uh, need a little bit more preparation. Waiting for the weather to cooperate, uh, and we'll get we'll get rolling on that. Yep. So, so the all right. Is, uh, the well, plan is we're gonna produce the first episode and then send it to Netflix. They're going to give us the heads up and then we're going to do it. Yeah. I have faith. So the, the last, the last question of, of the evening here, and I'm sure there's many, many people out there that have been asking themselves this exact same thing. How is Debbie from Plano? Oh, Debbie from Plano. Is that, is that what everybody's been wondering? I'm sure that's what I've been wondering. I'm sure there are others. (laughs) Debbie from Plano is well she is very um very much looking forward to the next season as you know debbie from plano is one of brandon's biggest supporters um she keeps in contact often asking (laughs) if there's any more updates and you know we so we keep her in uh in the loop or in the know as we say Uh, but yeah she's doing well and um she will undoubtedly be asking questions in our next season as well Awesome. Well, that's uh, that's all I can think of that anyone would possibly want to hear about to be brought up to speed as to what the American Justice Podcast has been up to since uh, the last episode of season one. So uh, it it has it has been a few months. It, it doesn't seem like it's it's been that long, but oh. but t- time is so skewed right now you know the concept of time just it's like we're living we we have been living in another dimension so uh i'm I'm still trying to get my legs back underneath me from from everything it's it's been tough it's been crazy yeah so and we're hopefully like almost all the way through january like i know i know the most well january is is traditionally known to be like one of the most boring months of the year and (laughs) Be damned. No, it wasn't. <laughs> January said, oh, yeah, hold my beer. Yeah, hold my beer. <laughs> so I I guess that's it. Uh, I am uh, C. Derek Miller. You can uh, visit C. Derek Miller dot com for all your C. Derek Miller needs, whatever in the hell those <laughs> might be. <laughs> I, think, I think we all have our C. Derek Miller needs. Right, right. Get 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 some books, listen to some podcasts, things like that. And Mr. Scott Pogency on the other side of the great city of Dallas, Texas. <laughs> we will uh, we will definitely be back. Hopefully um, it shouldn't take or hopefully it won't take very long for us to get everything organized for the next season. We're so looking forward to bringing it to everybody because, you know, like I said, this guy uh it's looking like he really deserves to have his story put out there and uh he really deserves to not be in prison so uh hopefully our aj army can help us with that case as well and uh we can just grow and grow and grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger and uh get more people involved in the movement to get these innocent people out of prison Right. And until then, you can go to AmericanJusticePodcast.com, leave us a message, get caught up on all the episodes. So I guess until then, stay aware, stay strong and get involved. We'll see you guys soon. Bye, guys.